That was putting energy into an inductor in an RL circuit. Well, we also need to do the reverse. We need to be able to take energy out of an RL circuit, out of an inductor. So it's important to understand what we have to do physically in order to get this to work. We have our battery. We have, and I'm going to talk about this switch so that you understand it in just a moment. Yes, that's why I said I'm going to talk about it in just a moment. You can keep saying what, but it's not going to help. <laughs> Thank you, though. All right, so here's the thing. Energy is stored where in a capacitor? In the what? In the electric field. Where is the energy stored in an inductor? John? In the magnetic field. So if you take a capacitor and you remove it from the circuit, a charge capacitor removed from the circuit, it maintains the charge, right? So it maintains the electric field, so it maintains the energy stored in the capacitor. The problem with is with an inductor, <coughs> energy is stored in the magnetic field of the inductor. The magnetic field in the inductor is caused by the current, right? Which means if you take the inductor out of the circuit, it no longer has current passing through it, it no longer has a magnetic field, therefore it's no longer storing energy. So in order to release the energy from the inductor without having it dissipate before we dissipate it through the resistor, we need to have it go instantaneously from chart, uh, putting energy into the inductor to removing energy from the inductor. So what you're looking at here is a switch where it basically starts out like this, where we have a battery, an inductor, and a resistor, and the current is flowing like this until we get to time t equals infinity, so that we put as much energy into the uh, inductor as we can. And then we flip this switch, and we go from having a battery in the circuit to removing the battery from the circuit without having uh, time go by so that the uh, current doesn't decrease in the inductor, and therefore the magnetic field stays in the inductor, and we can then have uh, energy de uh, dissipated in the resistor. Here we go. So again, we have the electric potential difference around the loop. This is identical to what we had before. Zero is equal to the EMF minus the electric potential difference across the resistor minus the electric potential difference across the inductor. Zero is equal to the EMF minus the current times the resistance minus L, the inductance, times the I D T. Well, let's see. We've removed the battery. So we remove the battery. That's gone. We now have that if we bring current over our current times resistance over the other side, current times resistance is equal to negative L D I T. Oh, let's see. Um, sorry, next step. So we have again D I D T. We want to get uh, current over on one side, so we'll have. Di divided by I on one side, negative R over L times dt on the other side. Just getting things so that they're on, uh, so we can take the integral. So let's take the integral of both sides, negative plus you R L dt is equal to the integral of Di over I. Again, we have uh, limits here. This is going to be from current initial to current final. This is time initial, which is zero, to time final, which is t. Well, on the left-hand side, we just have negative r l t from zero to t. On the right-hand side, we have the natural log of current from current initial to current final, or the natural log of current final minus current initial, or natural log of current initial. So we have negative RT over L is equal to the natural log of current final minus current initial. Again, we take the uh, E to both sides here. We get the current final over current initial equals E to the negative RT over L. Current final equals current initial times E to the negative RT over L. 
current initial in this particular case would be equal to, if you look at it, the current initial would just be equal to the EMF divided by the resistance. You have the same argument we had for the last one, so I'm not going to go through that. So that's the current as a function of time. Again, we have the same time constant. You can see L over R. Current as a function of time. Graph, <coughs> please. Rensok. The initial current is the EMF over the resistance. And then if T was infinity, it would be zero. Okay, and what does it look like between? So the current looks like this. Because what you've got is, instead of what we had before where the initial current was zero, here it, the, we start with a current through the inductor, and there is a resistance to that change in the current, and it slowly decreases. Good. We can figure out the, how the current changes as a function of time by taking the derivative of this equation. The EMF divided by the resistance times e to the negative uh, RT over L. Please take the derivative for me, Sierra. Okay, um, so you take the derivative of what the power, so you just have R, negative RL over L. Great. Resistance cancels out again. We get the IBT, the change in current as a function of time, is equal to the negative EMF over the inductance times E to the negative RT over L. And this graph is going to look like this. It simply starts at E over L, the I, the T as a function of time, and it's going to end at zero again. Good. So that's putting energy into and out of an inductor in an RL circuit. 